Round one, fight! Here we go! Oh no! Oh, nigga! Round one, fight! Gotcha, bitch! <laughs> I'm in danger! Sit down, big fella! I'm about to end this man's whole career. This is why frame data is important. What is going on guys? My name is Mad Dog Games and welcome to another episode of the Advanced Tip Series. A series where we'll take it to the next level by covering concept and techniques to help you improve your game. Today we're going to talk about one of the most important things in all fine games. That's right, frame data. Now before some of you leave, and yes, leave, because for some reason some of you are allergic to numbers, I will try my absolute best to make this very easy to understand. That way you won't have to use a lot of brain power. Deal? Alright. Before we start, let me mention a couple of things. First, if you end up enjoying this video, please like this video so that YouTube will recommend others to watch. Second, you can find more useful videos like this and similar playlists in the description down below. This is the third episode in the series. With that being said, let us get started. So what is frame data? Frame data is the mechanics, or blueprints, on how the game functions. It explains how every attack behaves once you press a button. Frames is the measurement of time on how long it takes for something to happen. Every fighting game runs at 60 frames per second. So one frame is equivalent to 1 60th of a second. This is best described in three categories. Startup, active, and recovery. Startup frames is how long the attack animation takes for it to begin. The smaller the frame number, closer to one frame, the faster it is to use. Let us examine my character standing quick jab. It takes seven frames for my attack to actually hit the opponent. Most of the character's jab speed on the roster is seven frames but just a little bit of handful of characters are 8 frames. Unfortunately, there is one character, Shao Kahn's, whose jabs are 9 frames, which is one of the slowest in the game, but apparently makes it up in range. If my opponent and I press the same button at the same time, whoever is the fastest will win the exchange. Knowing startup frames is very important because this will tell you and help you identify which attacks are best used to punish your opponent with. Let us move on to active frames. Active frames is how long the move is active for once you make contact with your opponent. This typically runs at a smaller frame rate. This makes sense because your hits can't last forever. It has to eventually end so you can use your next attack. Notice here that my jab only lasts for one frame. Makes sense since it's quick and short. Some moves tend to be longer in active frames like Director's Cut, which also has multiple hits. Projectiles tend to have longer active frames since they go across the screen and won't go away until it either hits the opponent or leaves the stage. Knowing active frames is very important because this will help you identify which attacks can be great for pressure and could lead to more opportunities to land the hit. Now for recovery. Recovery is the amount of time you have to wait to be able to block, move, or try another attack again. The bigger the recovery frame, the more risk it brings. Knowing recovery frames is very important to know because during recovery frames, you are very vulnerable to being countered. When this happens, we call this with punished, which really means you press a button at a bad range and you're stuck at the recovery stage. So again, startup, active, and recovery are the three main ingredients of frame data. Now let us learn the different types of consequences that comes after using an attack. The benefits of knowing frame data is what comes afterwards. When you attack, is it safe, unsafe, or are there some sort of advantage? These values are represented within what is called block advantage and hit advantage. Let us start off with block advantage. Block advantage is the most important one to understand in my opinion because this will tell you if the move is worth it or not. But block advantage really means how much of an advantage you are in once your opponent completely blocked your attack. Because 7 frames is the fastest attack in the game, anytime your attack leaves you negative 7 is what is considered barely safe. Here is a visual to understand what I mean. Sindel's wheeling crash is negative 7 on block. 
which is barely safe. If I were to use Scorpion's quick jab, which is the normal fastest in the game, at 7 frames, then nothing happens and Sindel is safe. But now let's say she decides to play a little risky and adds a mix up low at the end. This however is negative 14 on block which is unsafe if I pick the right punish tool. It's obvious that my 7 frame jab will work to punish. But what happens if I'm plus in frames? What does it mean? If you're plus in frames it ultimately means that you have a chance to keep on attacking and pressuring. Here's an example. Jade is very scary at the corner because her pressure gain can be very hard to deal with. Her fatal attraction leaves her plus 5 on block, meaning that she can continue pressuring you with another attack. She can move 5 more frames before you can. And here me playing as Jax, I'm trying to button mash as hard as I can and you can see me constantly losing because it's not my turn still. So being plus is always a good thing if your character has it. Let us move on to Hit Advantage. Hit Advantage is the advantage you receive once you hit your opponent. This means your opponent is stuck in place and won't be able to move. The higher the frames, the more freedom you have afterwards. The best way to test this out is by using an attack and jump afterwards. Because my hit is plus 9 on hit, it means I can move 9 frames before my opponent can. Here is another move but this time gives me 24 frames a hit advantage. It's more obvious here how much of a gap there is. Some moves however are negative which means the opponent has the advantage and can move before you can. This is important because in some situations this allows you to set up some nice strategies depending on your character. Not all characters can but for like Sub-Zero. Hit advantage is very important because his goal is to mix you up as much as he wants but also as soon as he can. So for example, once he throws you in place, he uses roundhouse as a stagger because this attack has 16 frames of hit advantage. Then he can follow up with his overhead that is 19 frames or low attack which is 13 frames. Meaning that he can give you a couple of frames for you to block and decide the correct mix up which is extremely hard. But that is what hit advantage does for you. Now here are some advanced ones. For those that are looking to take more advantage of frames. There is what we call frame traps and flawless block advantage. Let us start off with frame trap. Frame trap is a situation where you are at enough frame advantage to connect another attack that cannot be interrupted. For example, one obvious one is Sub-Zero. He has a frame trap attack that is guaranteed on block. And that is because his brutal kick leaves him plus 4 on block. So he can move 4 frames earlier and using it with his down poke which is 6 frames, there is nothing in the game that is quick enough to punish it. Plenty of people fall for this attack and I did at first too because when he uses this attack he is fully committing himself and it should automatically be unsafe but nope, in this situation he's safe and it's another reason why Sub-Zero is so strong. Not all characters are able to do it because it all depends on the tools and attacks they offer but learning how to frame trap will definitely open some good opportunities in a fight. Flawless block advantage is the ability to change the opponent's frame data and allows you opportunities to punish them. For example, if we were to block Liu Kang's Chinese warrior which is plus 4 on block, flawless blocking will change it to a negative 11, allowing me to use my 7 frame attack to punish it. However, not all attacks are the same as some will remain plus or barely safe. I will have a link on why learning to flawless block is important as it explains further things to consider when using that mechanic. It's pretty advanced level stuff. I want to take the time to go over very quickly on how to read frame data in Mortal Kombat 11. It's one thing to somewhat know it, but another thing reading it. Let us start off with the basic attack section. This is where you're going to need to learn the frames of the first hits on each button because some of them might transfer over when learning other combo attacks. For example, standing 1 is 7 frame startup. You'll see all of that at the bottom right, which does include other data like active, recovery, hit advantage, and block advantage. But the most important thing you need to get out of this section is knowing your speed of your fastest normal. Then we can move on to the combo attack section. This is where you're going to see attacks that has multiple hits. When looking at the startup attack for these attacks, just keep in mind the combo attack that includes your starting normals on it won't show up there, 
but we'll show the starting frames of the last hit. If you want to know the first hit, you have to go back to the basic attack section to know the actual frames of the first hit. And the most important thing to get out of this section is noticing if these attacks are safe or unsafe. And you can see all of that on the block advantage section, as well as hit advantage and recovery if you want to pay closer attention. You can also turn on the frame data into live mode on the controls, which makes it much easier to analyze. In the special move section are found the next tab over. The startup and block advantage is especially important when reading this section because they often leave you unsafe, and that is because you are committing to a strong attack. That is why it's very important to learn to hit confirm and go back to the combo attack section and learn what is actual safe. Mortal Kombat 11 I think is one of the best fighting games to learn frame data today, and I say this because they have it all laid out for you. Most games today don't have that but instead have you figure it out by going to training mode and having you do it, which can take a longer time learning it. And there you go, that's pretty much all you need to know when it comes to frame data. Understanding what is negative and what is positive is enough to put you ahead. Hopefully that wasn't that bad and you came out of this learning something. If you found this helpful, a like will be highly appreciated. Consider joining my Discord if you have questions on other things. Thank you guys so much for watching and thanks for helping this channel reach 45,000 subscribers. I love you guys so much and I'll see you guys next time.